it is while in the silence which everything that appears here appears to point to, where the individual realizes their oneness with the Father within. I and the Father are one, yet the Father is greater than I. So it is within the silence where the individual releases identification to the untrue, illusory, unreal, egoic beliefs to manifest the greatness of the Father with increasing frequency, more so each moment, on a continuous basis as far as the senses proceed. Today we discuss returning to the silence which is also where the still small voice, which is distinct from mental chatter, the still small voice of God arises and eventually becomes the only voice listened to rather than the voice of the illusions, which only appear to disappear to reveal the reality of God. This is what I would like to discuss with you today. To discuss this in a way that I trust is beneficial for you, I title today's conversation Mind Map. I surrender to the flow of God. Today, I draw some inspirations from Lessons in Truth by H. Emily Cady. This is Lesson 10, Finding the Secret Place. I'll put a link in the description to our previous discussions, inspirations from this book. She says, we hear a great deal about sitting in the silence. To many, it does not mean very much, but they have not yet learned how to wait in silence for God only, or to hear any voice except external ones. Noise belongs to the outside world, not to God. God works in the stillness, and we can so wait upon the Father of our being as to be conscious of the still, inner working, conscious of the fulfillment of our desires. So recently we discussed listening to the still small voice, which provides vivid clarity, which we refer to as the greatest teacher in the universe, which was inspired by a passage from the book Abd Allah, Teacher Healer, by Walter C. Lanyon. I'll link a description to that discussion. So in moments of stillness, the still small voice arises and provides clarity to the questions the individual might have. And also, in relation to any seeming challenge, what to do, what not to do, these answers are received within while the individual abides in the stillness. Now, what I have also found is that this kind of experience abiding in the stillness also happens while I am in flow state, which is one of the reasons why I encourage making flow a priority. Or if you prefer to say it another way, surrender to the flow of God. It is while the individual has surrendered to the flow of God, or we could say, remaining as I am, where the actions and awareness are experienced as one, as soul doership is an illusion. God does everything. We may notice this, for example, in conversations. While we're communicating from a state of flow, Conversations flow naturally. A mastermind arises, as discussed in Think and Grow Rich, while we're in flow state. Insights, perspectives are shared, ideas, and even clear, precise steps to take to resolve, let's say, a seeming challenge are experienced during these conversations, flow-based conversations. Also, during creative expressions, be it dance, be it art, actions and awareness are experienced as one. God does everything. This is what I mean by surrendering to the flow of God. And we can say then, our creative expressions seem to surprise us. 
we may ask the question, where did this come from? I did not know I had this within me. Well, you have everything within you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. You are complete in love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And it is then experienced as a manifestation, having surrendered to the flow of God. The same is experienced with an athlete or any experience in life. As the individual surrenders to the flow of God, they also notice the still small voice arising and also becoming the only voice that the individual listens to as they realize their oneness with the Father within. So, just as we can be still by sitting in the silence, during meditation, during prayer, we can also experience the silence while we're in a state of flow, even while engaging in conversation, even while during creative expression, sports, hobbies, going for a walk. I sometimes refer to this as living meditation. She says, how to seek the secret place, where to find it, how to abide in it. These are the questions that today, more than any other time in the history of the world, are engaging the hearts of individuals. More than anything else, it is what I want. It is what you want. All these steps that we are taking by spreading words of truth and striving to manifest the light which we have already received are carrying us on swiftly to the time where we shall have consciously the perfect mind of Christ. The perfect mind of Christ. With all the love and beauty and health and power which that implies. I can of myself do nothing, the Father within doeth the work. The individual surrendering to the flow of God, realizing the good perfect and pleasing will of God. Having not conformed to the patterns of this world and renewing their mind, relating over to Romans 12, 2, the individual flows in creative expression, which we can relate to as listening only to the still, small voice. Because, as she says here, if the individual is confused, identified with mental chatter, those are illusions that exist only in mind, generating that mental chatter, generating confusion. they are beliefs that the individual has identified with, from which they point to visible appearances, generating arguments of the intellect, unnecessary resistance in their life. All of that belongs to, as she says, the outside world. And what we can say about that is that is a result of identification to the illusions of I. So we can release those illusions of I, those illusions of separation from the source of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, prosperity, so we then no longer need to appear to conform to the noise, thus are not confused by it, not swayed by it, because we listen exclusively to the still small voice. And also, as we remain in our flow, we're creatively expressing, be it the tasks, be it the projects, the different initiatives on the journey to manifesting the entrepreneurial success, artistic expressions, etc. I like how she says it. That is to me the perfect mind of Christ, manifesting the love and beauty. Now, John 7.38 also speaks about flow 
and the perfect mind of Christ. It says, The one who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Notice how from his innermost being, which is God, will flow, flow rivers of water. That is a result of surrendering to the flow of God. We'll talk about how to practically do this by applying the flow sequence as discussed in the book Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. So here are some key insights in relation to the flow sequence. She says, we need not be anxious or in a hurry for the full manifestation. While you're in flow, you are not anxious nor in a hurry. As you know, I can of myself do nothing. The Father within doeth the work. Soul doership is an illusion. And part of surrendering to the flow of God is letting go of the need to control, try to force things. That would be confessions of lacking trust in the sure foundation that manifests all that is delightful, in love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. There are opportunities that may be presented as we are involved with the day-to-day -day initiatives to release those illusions of control, surrender to the flow of God, and let God do everything for you, thus not generating unnecessary resistance, overthinking, confusion in mind which if the individual identifies with these untrue, illusory beliefs, it generates what James Allen said in the book The Heavenly Life, which we discussed recently. I'll link in the description to it. Argumentations of the intellect, the clamors, the cravings that make up the animal and intellectual individual that are a result of identification to the illusions of I. While we're in flow, we surrender. I surrender to the flow of God. I remain as I am. I can be as I am to manifest the perfect, pleasing will of God. So consider that. Not anxious, not in a hurry. And she says why. She says, let us not at any time lose sight of the fact that our desire great as it is, is only God's desire in us. So if our desire, as monumental as it may seem to the individual, as massive, let's say, in complexity, if the individual thinks about various steps that could be involved with manifesting that desire, it's God's desire in us. So God does it for the individual. The individual releases the illusions of control, surrenders to God as there's no separation between I and I am. I and the Father are one, yet the Father is greater than I. So I experience greatness in, on, and as the outer appearances of God, the manifestations of God, which are the creative expressions of God. God does everything. I can of myself do nothing. The Father would then do it the work. She says, your longing for greater manifestation is the eternal energy that holds the worlds in their orbit, out pushing through you to get into fuller manifestation. You need not worry. You need not be anxious. You need not strive. Only let it. Learn how to let it. So again, key points. No need to be anxious. Be in a hurry. No need to strive. Let it be. Let there be light. Or as you've been discussing, let delight be as it was in the beginning. Genesis 1.3 And God said, The light shall be. And the light was. So I like to say, Delight shall be as de light. 
of light, like desire of the Father, delight shall be, and the light was. Now, this is experienced practically while we're in flow. Reflect with me for a moment, recalling a time when you were in your flow. It could have been during conversations. It could have been during some form of creative expression, maybe a hobby, maybe while playing a sport, maybe while going for a walk. Notice how everything happened ideally, automatically, and flowed as actions and awareness were experienced as one. Notice how everything appeared to be in your favor. Everything appeared synchronistically to be in synchronicity. A perfect example would be, I'm actually in New York now, recording this video on a Wednesday to be released on Thursday. Although the first minute introduction was recorded while I was at home. Yesterday, I met up with a number of my clients, including two members of the Flow-Based Prosperity Service, which if you're interested in that, I'll link in the description to it. The meetings were back to back. I had a number of initiatives to do. Plus, I wanted to see some places while I'm here in New York. And all of it flowed effortlessly, naturally, ideally, automatically. Better than I thought it would be. Because I surrendered to the flow of God. I know that certainly, in reality, the reality of God, everything and everyone is in harmony in a mutually beneficial way. Everything appears synchronistically to be in synchronicity. I trust that is the way that it is. I trust you have experienced it as well. The individual may forget it because perhaps they have been conforming to particular beliefs which generate illusions of separation. Through the untrue belief identification, it could appear to conforming to the patterns of this world. We could say identifying with the noise of the outside world, and that is an illusion, as identification to the noise of the outside world is a result of identification to particular beliefs that result in the individual being identified with the noise of the outside world. God works in the stillness. When we remain in our flow, what happens is we listen to the still small voice, which is crystal clear, and we surrender to the flow of God, allowing God to take care of everything else. As there's only God, only God is real, and the reality of God is in a complete state of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, pushing out through you, as she says here, the eternal energy that holds the worlds in their orbits, out pushing through you to get into fuller manifestation. So all of this is experienced while we're in flow, where the individual does not identify with anxious beliefs, worrying beliefs, striving beliefs, they release identification to let delight be as the light always was. So let's talk about how we could do this. Here we have on my screen the sequence that was discussed in the book Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. So first, the individual has a vision, whatever it may be for you your entrepreneurial success, ideal harmonious relationship, creative expression, maybe you're doing an event. Now, insights are received within via intuition, inspiration from God. And so we move forward with those initiatives. It could be a task. It could be a number of projects. It could be the first step. Like we discussed in Tuesday's video, I recommend watching it, where we relate this over to two books. The Quantum Leap Strategy by Price Bridget, and The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. So we have a vision. And for more on vision, I recommend the video that I released at the start of the year, which I do at the start of every year recently, Creating a Vision. I'll link in the description to it. 
Number two is immediate reporting and feedback with the task, the project, the initiative. So I step into the flow. My intention is I'm doing the activity, the task, the project, whatever it is, from a state of flow. And as soon as I step into that conversation or that initiative, there is immediate reporting and feedback. This is where I practice being still. In a living meditation kind of way, I can relate this over to a book called The Charisma Myth, where she says, power, presence, and warmth. Power means direction, presence, being here and now. Now is where all the power is, as we discussed also recently. I'll link in the description to that video, inspired by James Allen's book, The Heavenly Life. And warmth. I'm present to, let's say, if it was a conversation, emotional intelligence present to the interaction with the other person. And there's immediate reporting and feedback. Optimization data. So I may say something, they may respond. That's immediate reporting and feedback. So when I receive this immediate reporting and feedback, I am aware of what I imagine in relation to this reporting and feedback. And if I appear to try to control, be still, I release that need to control. If it appears challenging, that's okay. That's fine. If I appear to be too attached to an outcome or try to force it in a particular direction, I release it in the moment. And then what I notice is number three, there is a harmony between what appears as a challenge and skill. So while we're in flow, we cultivate skill, we could say in a rapid way, because I surrendered to the flow of God. And even if it does not appear rapidly for me, I don't judge by appearances. I embrace the challenge and further skill manifests. And as I continue in that interaction, or as I continue in that project, what I notice is action and awareness are experienced as one. God does everything. I have, you could say, successfully surrendered to the flow of God. As I embrace the challenges that may appear, what I may think of as challenges, I release the control unnecessary need to control. As I am aware of what I think, and if I don't think from the premise of truth, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, then I appear to not be as I am. No shame and condemnation. Release those untrue beliefs. Be still in the presence of God. As mentioned, you could do this while in initiatives. Not just while you have opportunities to sit down and be still and meditate. This is what I refer to as living meditation. So, as stated, from the innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Experiential, practical. This is a practical experience. And we've all experienced it. We can experience this again and again and again to the point where your life is this way now. You have surrendered to the flow of God. What you also notice is there's no distractions, fear, doubt, and indecision no longer exists in mind. You may experience time distortion, similar to what we discussed in Tuesday's video again. And he says in the book Flow, the activity in the person becomes autotelic. So autotelic is an individual that knows that I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment unconditionally and thus cannot be conditioned by appearances. They listen exclusively to the still small voice. They remain in their flow. They don't identify with the noise, the mental chatter. They don't get involved with unnecessary arguments of the intellect in mind which manifest as unnecessary, inharmonious relationships with people, environment, circumstance, and information. 
which is a form of illusory control. Why would God, if God animates everything and everyone ideally automatically from the premise of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, generate any illusions of separation? The illusions of separation are only generated in mind by the individual and no shame and condemnation. The individual can release those illusions of separation by surrendering to the flow of God, exactly like how we discussed here. And as we practice this again and again and again, mind is purified from these illusory, untrue beliefs stored in the subconscious mind that manifest the illusions of separation from God. And the individual then remains as I am. The individual experiences what she says here as, we shall have consciously the perfect mind of Christ with all the love and beauty and health and power which that implies. And so I trust you found this video to be helpful and practical. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I surrender to the flow of God as I realize that I am taking care of everything for all individuals is the source of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, and prosperity. Thus, reality now is in a complete state of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. I remain as I am as I allow God to take care of everything for me to manifest as ideal harmonious relationships, creative expressions, manifesting the perfect, pleasing will of God as the outer appearances of God. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.